This video is going to be an attempt to take an in-depth look at who Kyle Hamilton is as a football player in the NFL, as a safety, a hybrid safety. Really, the, the title sh it should be more aptly put as what is Kyle Hamilton, not who is he. He showed incredible promise in 2022 as, as a rookie, but what specific position uh, do you think, do most people think, is his best one? Is it, the, is it the nickel slot position that he played generally for the Ravens in 2022? You know, first of all, most of the things the Ravens asked him to do in 2022, he, he looked incredibly talented, very decisive. He just turned um, 22 years old, I think, in March, a couple of months ago. I think he played about 550 snaps as a 21-year-old rookie uh, for a Ravens defense that finished the 2022 season like third in the NFL at 18 points per game allowed. So he played a role in one of the best, NFL, best defenses in the NFL. Pretty impressive. Six foot four, listed at 220, uh, makes him incredibly unique for, for a safety. Statistically, uh, does not stack up overall to the other three safeties that are rookies uh, from the 2022 draft, I should say. But this video is not my attempt to compare him or contrast him with other safeties. It, it's to talk about what he appears to do best or what are the things he does best and then what are the situations that he struggles in uh, to more clearly identify for Ravens fans how the front office and how the team might be um, analyzing and evaluate, evaluating him. Uh, 62 total tackles in 2022, two sacks, I think one forced fumble, two forced fumbles, excuse me, if you count the playoff game, and then five passes defended. He didn't have an interception or at least one that counted. He had one against New Orleans that was called back. That seems to be where the opinions or evaluations of Kyle Hamilton really uh, move off into two distinct uh, or, or separate directions. If you were to compare him to the three other rookie safeties that had a huge impact, Jake Juan Brisker, Jalen Petre, and Kirby Joseph for the Lions, his statistical impact only really compares to Kirby Joseph's, but Kirby Joseph had four INTs. Kyle Hamilton had none. Jaquan Brisker had four sacks, 100-plus tackles, one interception. Jalen Petre, of course, had a historic season, five interceptions, 147 tackles. So those three statistically exceed Kyle Hamilton. We're not here to necessarily compare him, but I am pointing out to you that those three guys played more on the back end, on the third level of the defense. You'll hear me refer to that constantly. We're going to get the film rolling here in a moment. I do have a video that may interest people to, uh, comparing these safeties. I'll link it up here in a moment. It's called Who Was the Best Rookie Safety in 2022, where I, I do go into that issue comparing those guys more so and, um, and highlighting the differences between them. So we're going to get some film running. And we're going to talk about Kyle Hamilton's 2022 season. If you've been around my channel much, you know that I, I have kind of covered this topic already as a nickel safety in the Ravens 4-2-5 personnel. Uh, Hamilton was physically dominant at times. Spectacular moments against the Broncos here, the Panthers, and even the Bengals. He just showed a lot of talent uh, coming forward and playing with um, aggression and physicality, playing downhill, if you will, uh, destroying run plays destroying run blocks like you see here against the tight end, rookie tight end, another rookie tight end, Greg Dolchitz for the Broncos. Less effective on what I would call, not double moves, but like China or whip route concepts. He seemed to go for the first move at times and kind of, you know, get taken himself out of position. Played really well with leverage, if you ask me. And he's a load. Look, like I said earlier, they got him listed at 6'4", 219 still. I mean, it, it's not hard to imagine that he might be 230 if you really look at him compared to other guys. Not as thick and, and wide as Roquan Smith and, and Patrick Queen even, but a big guy, a handful for receivers to try to block, whether it's attached to the formation or whether it's on a bubble concept. Um, three teams, I thought, really attacked him with those whip or China route concepts, the Broncos, Bengals, and Giants, Giants being in week six, all got him on that. But look, these these plays, I think, and a couple others here thereafter are going to show his burst, his closing speed. It's just tremendous. On run plays away from him, his closing speed is unbelievable. Um, my buddy Frank, who's in our Discord, he calls it range, still referring to the same thing. Now, this is a, a very unique move by a rookie safety. You're basically getting a swim move on a starting guard in the NFL for his first career sack. Quite unique. He had two, even on Kyle Hamilton's two forced fumbles, which you'll see coming up here in a moment, um, his burst, his ability to close out distance and get involved in the play, I think is unique. 
um, as, as a safety, you're expected to have range, right? So we're assuming that. But to me, Kyle Hamilton's even, his range, his burst, his closing speed even kind of stands out. You see it on this play here. He's obviously lined up inside of the number two receiver. So we would call it apex position. And his eyes are in the backfield. As soon as he sees what looks like run action, that's a trigger for him. He's gone. It's a power read concept. He runs up field, forces the – I don't know that he's necessarily the guy who's being read, to be honest with you, but for a moment, let's say that he is. But it certainly looked like Jacoby Brissett was looking in here at an inside linebacker. He's run up field outside of the pulling guard, which theoretically would be a kickout block, and then he's just going to jut back inside and make the tackle on the shovel pass. So basically, he was in position to take away the sweep to the running back. Now he would have to make the tackle on Nick Chubb, who's a load. But then once the ball is kept and then pitched, you know, or the shovel pass to the tight end or the H-back, he makes the tackle there too. He essentially was able to play two responsibilities. Of course, like I said earlier, Jacoby Brissett, I don't think was reading him theoretically, but he could, you know, he could have been if his, if his face mask was looking more at Kyle Hamilton, but in this case he was not. You get a great example, I think, of the burst and the closing speed on two consecutive run plays here. This is away from him. He's between the hash and the top of the numbers on the other side of the field. He's the first defender to make contact all the way over here near the other side, top of the numbers. Now you've got defenders playing man over here and getting blocked up, but you can see the Ravens have been gashed here by this run play. No one's there to touch the running back at all. You got a D tackle who stems into the A gap, Ty Bowser's in the C gaps. You got a huge B gap, no second level defender to fill it. Kyle Hamilton does what a safety should. Right, but he's playing as a nickel safety. Is is that the only role he can play in? No, he's capable of playing other places. I'll show you limited film of him playing at the third level here a little bit later. Um, back to the two fumbles that he forced, and this is another one that shows the range. He's got motion coming to him, I think, by Jerry Judy. And Geno Stun does make first contact, but watch when Kyle Hamilton decides to go back to the other side. It's a cool play by the Broncos. You got motion here. This um, Receiver is going back to the other side. Rams run this a lot. And you got the running back getting the ball going to the other direction. Kyle Hamilton's feet are outside of the hash to the downside of the field here, where the motion went. He gets off of a defender and is able to go over there and make the tackle. Still like a 9 or 10 yard gain. So it's a positive plus play for the Broncos. Don't get me wrong. But I think it illustrates to you the type of range that he has and the burst. Um, he's a force multiplier. Sometimes I think Kyle Hamilton in 2022 made it look like the Ravens had 11 and a half guys on the field. These two forced fumbles that you'll see in a moment, he's closing distance from 10 plus yards out. Here's one unblocked hit on Baker Mayfield from behind. His burst, I don't think was talked about enough in the pre-draft process last year. It was all a focus on his 40 time. And I understand that because it wasn't a great 40. But in my opinion, now that you have one year of film on him, unique player as a safety, as a blitzer, unique guy because of his closing speed, his ability to to hold what could have been a longer gain in the two plays I showed you to only an eight or a 10-yard gain when someone else messes up their gap integrity. I did not like him sitting back. I did not like him when he wasn't moving forward like you get here. There's a lot coming at him. There's a slot receiver who could come to block him, and then the Browns have this really cool scheme where they're pulling two guys out. Essentially, it's like buck sweep if you ask me or they're pulling two guards or two linemen out, and Kyle Hamilton sitting back instead of attacking. He thought the slot uh, receiver was going to block him, and he did not. And then he gets overtaken by the guard, the lineman. I like him more coming forward. He had more impact there. Let's, let's at least settle on it that way. I felt like he was less effective in coverage as well when he was staying back. And this is going to be an example from the wild card game. You'll, you'll, he's off screen to our bottom left, but you will get the all 22 in a moment. That's Hayden Hurst on a third and 16. He's going to chip Tyus Bowser and then release out into the flats. Burrow's got a little bit of pressure, gets it out there to him. And coming forward for me was what Kyle Hamilton was best at in 2022. You get an example of it here, putting his inside shoulder right on the football. And then I believe he's the guy who recovers it as well, forcing a fumble, letting everybody know that the Ravens defense was there to play. You're going to get the all 22 angle of it. Downhill plays to me was where he had more impact. I don't necessarily think that's the only thing that he can do. I think it just shows you that he has high awareness, ability to react quickly and go, and then his burst and closing speed is just such that he can be very sudden and explosive when taking on blocks and when making tackles. And certainly he did have some missed tackles, and I'll show you at least two of them here. Or in this case, dislodging the football 
by being committed to taking it on with his leverage side shoulder. It looked like to me he put his shoulder pad right on the ball. Um, quite impressed with his play last year, to be honest with you, even though there were struggles in week two. Really encouraging to see him come back in week three and make this play on a third and seven. You're going to get um, kind of a switch between these two receivers here that are stacked, and Demarion Pepe Williams is going to get beat by the outside receiver. Kyle Hamilton stepping down into the boundary to help cover up the tight end or the running back. Has the awareness, and that's one thing I think that's very special about him. His awareness is related to where his eyes are looking. There are times, I think, where his eyes are in the backfield heavy. It seems to generally benefit him. Like right here, you can see he's looking right at the quarterback. And I think he also has soft eyes. We would say that you have to have high beams on the quarterback and low beams on you know whatever else is around you. And I think he's one of those guys who can pull that off. And then once he sees the ball thrown, you can see his attention divert to wherever that route is. You can see him shift his body as soon as the ball was thrown. Okay, now I know it's not being thrown to the guy that I'm, I got my soft beams on, my low, my low beams on. Now let me recover and force a fumble that Marcus Peters recovers, you know, right next to the sideline. I think he's a unique player. Um, like I said, and you are, if you're watched this far already, you know, used in the nickel a lot in 2022. Uh, the Ravens moved Chuck Clark on to the Jets in a trade, and they retained Geno Stone. So perhaps Hamilton's going to be used um, in the same deployment moving forward in 2023. Maybe he'll be a nickel. It, when you watch plays like this, you can understand why. This is a bubble screen, and he literally embarrasses, I think it's DJ Moore, but I could be wrong, driving him back into the backfield, into the ball carrier on this bubble screen. The Panthers tried that concept three times to Hamilton's side, and neither time was it successful. I think he showed the ability to play at all levels of the defense, though, I'm going to be honest with you. This is an example of him playing man against the tight end, against the Jets in week one on a second and 11. On a first cut, Kyle Hamilton is decisive, and he's able to make tackles. He's able to close down. You can see as soon as the tight end catches the ball, Hamilton's on top of him. He's playing an off coverage. It's a second and long, so we have a lot of things in our favor as a Ravens defense. You know, and Kyle Hamilton has a lot of things in his favor, but I'm going to use this to compare to when uh, a quarterback has time and the receiver has a little bit of time to set Hamilton up with a second move. <clears throat> second level here, third down against the Browns. He's going to get a missed tackle against the running back, Kareem Hunt, in the flats. It is a second and long, however, so there's other guys to recover. But this is one of the situations, and I'll show you another one here in a moment, where Kyle, Kyle Hamilton did show some deficiency. Um, finishing off tackles, particularly you know down near the sideline. Uh, missing tackles, at least in this case, he misses the tackle on what I believe to be the correct side for the coverage that he has. He knows he's got the sideline over there, and then I think this is Marcus Peters to be a secondary help tackler or defender. If you're going to miss the tackle and at least you miss it on the leverage side, we can deal with that because we got help on your opposite side. There's a couple examples. I think this one's from week one of him missing the tackle on the wrong side, and I think it's Garrett Wilson ends up getting a first down on a third on a third and long. I think it's like third and ten. One of Garrett Wilson's first touches of the of his rookie season, and one of the things I've noticed about Kyle Hamilton, I mentioned in a, a video film study I did during the season, is that. He will oftentimes get his eyes so heavy in the backfield that he'll lose uh, connection with receivers, whether it's zone or man. You can see you've got you know, a really weird delineation of the Ravens defenders here on this third and 10. Kyle Hamilton's playing the flat down to the boundary. Brandon Stevens appears to be playing some, some off coverage there, some deeper coverage responsibility. Kyle Hamilton and Stevens both have Garrett Wilson, you know, essentially bracketed here, not by design. It's not the technique, you know, that they're that they're being asked to do. They're not designed to bracket him because of his talent level. It's just the way the route the, um, the route worked itself out. And then Kyle Hamilton gets really heavy on the quarterback. Joe Flacco gets the ball out here, and then watch where he misses the tackle. He should not be missing the tackle on this side. He cannot allow Garrett Wilson to get back there. He's got to funnel him back to his help defender. But when you have when you play different coverages, when you line up in different places, different sides of the field, sometimes you lose um, understanding of where your help is because we're talking about an unsettled situation where Joe Flacco was able to get the ball out right before he was tackled, right before he was hit, I should say. Um, I think that play and the previous play kind of give you an illustration of the things that he did have some struggles with, but it wasn't all the time. Here's an example of cover three against the Panthers um, later on in the season. 
a lot cleaner delineation of the coverage and see able to get there and make the tackle on a first and 10. When I say a lot cleaner uh, distribution of the coverage, I'll pause it here in a moment so you can see. So you, you certainly have what looks like four under, you know, three deep, cover three on first and 10. Once he gets his feet settled and he's square, you know, just like every, most other defenders, he's in a lot better body position. I felt like when his shoulders got turned and his shoulders weren't uh, parallel to the goal line, the, the yard line, the, the line of scrimmage, or, or perpendicular to the sidelines, whatever you want to say, those were the situations where he seemed to have struggle and where he seemed to struggle and not play with as much leverage. First career interception on a tipped ball where Chuck Clark was called for a hold. Thought it was a really ticky tack call, but you can see Kyle Hamilton has the once he gets the ball in his hand, he's trying to score here. I think he's a dangerous player. I think that there will be interceptions. There will certainly be turnovers. He already forced two. You saw them. The thing that I really like is the closing speed, the burst, the awareness, the ability to see routes and the quarterback at the same time. Now, this route concept is one of the ones that I thought he had trouble with. And you'll see, I think, two examples of it here. One of them being against uh, Boyd of the Bengals. This one, I think, is against Judy of the Broncos. He does go for the first move, but he is, I think that's going to benefit him more than it's going to hurt. You can see that right now, He's got his high beams back here, and he's got awareness of what Judy is doing, whether this is man, you know, whether this is some a match concept, whatever it, it, it is. But then once the receiver changes directions, he's already kind of, I don't want to say overcommitted, but he definitely commits heavy to that first move by a receiver. I think it does benefit him and the Ravens, you know, more often than not. Another example of him covering the flats on a second and long, Kind of looks like a, a drop cover three. Chuck Clark has dropped down here to the hash from a safety position. So he's going to drop down. Hamilton kind of covers the flats. Queen, I think, takes the other hash. And I believe this is Pepe Williams taking the other flat. So, you know, kind of looks like a cover three. Sometimes cover three, quarter, quarter, half can look the same. But it certainly looks like Geno Stone's getting to the middle of the field. Kyle Hamilton is one of those guys that I think is able to see the routes developing, cover his man, and see the quarterback. So there's a little bit of a split second that he gains when the quarterback does release the football versus certain other players because he's got his eyes on the quarterback so often. So, you know, there's a give and take there. There's positives and negatives to that at certain times. And in certain coverages, you want to do it. In certain coverages, you don't. Another example of a receiver change in direction, you got a bunch formation down here to the bottom side by the Bengals in Week 18. Hayden Hurst is going to run like a little under from the outside position. That's him right here. And then Boyd is going to shake to the outside. And because he's got two inside releases already, Hamilton, for whatever reason, is worried about outside leverage. So he just reacts too heavily to Boyd's outside fake and gives up a pretty easy completion, if you ask me, for Burrow and Boyd you know, over the middle of the field. Hopefully I'm giving you an idea of what he does really well come downhill, make plays, uh, commit to the first move by a receiver, react quickly, and then what he may struggle with, what other teams may, uh, how other teams may try to attack him. As a third level safety, there wasn't a ton of film. Certainly the film from week two against Miami wasn't great. I can't show you two of those plays because they're already on the NFL's uh, YouTube channel. So, you know, I would, I would have to edit that out in any case. So I found a couple that I do not believe are on there. This is him playing an example of what I call funnel for the Ravens. Let it run, and I'll pull it back and briefly explain it. Not targeted. Marlon is covering the guy in the slot. Patrick Queen's able to make the play on a third and seven. Funnel, three over two. Try, now, it's not the same shape here because of the routes you're getting, you know, by um, Marlon Humphrey's man. So I'll pull it back a little bit so we can maybe see it a little better. So hopefully this looks uh, similar enough. You got three over two, you got three over two. The inside defender is inside leverage, inside leverage. The outside defender is outside leverage. Brandon Stevens appears to be locked up man there, so there might be a slightly different call on that side than there is on this side. That's what uh, we've tried to explain, and Edgar Allen's done a great job of doing split field coverage videos and trying to show people and explain to people what we mean when we say there's a different call on each side of the field. So the coverage could look different, but of course the routes and the way the routes make themselves the routes work out can make things look differently as well. But Kyle Hamilton as a as a third level safety. 
isn't as quick to react. Does it mean he's not quick? No. I think it means he's playing it safe. In my opinion, the guys who were playing left safety for the Ravens last year, so this is Marcus Williams, right safety, right side of the defense. The guys who played left safety in a deep alignment, Chuck Clark, Geno Stone, Kyle Hamilton, it seemed to me that they were very conservative in that position when they were called to play deep half or even middle of the field free safety, meaning they had a deeper alignment and they weren't jumping routes as quickly. That seemed to be a, a precept, a foundational element of the defense from that left safety position. Not sure why that is. Maybe it's the personnel because Clark and Stone and Hamilton are not smaller, quicker guys. But in any case, that's the pattern that I thought I noticed. I kind of attribute some of that to Kyle Hamilton being a rookie and getting beat deep in week two and then reacting to that, as well as the way the defense was coached, the way that the coaches wanted um, – Stone, Stone, Clark, and Hamilton to play when they were back there. I think he's got tremendous awareness. I think his film study must be exquisite. There's examples pre-snap of him pointing things out. And I think all that just makes him look more aware and, and quicker uh, during the games because his ability to react, he, he kind of knows what's coming. I think he can play all of the techniques that I've shown you. Uh, gave you a very few, very uh, small amount of film of him playing at the third level. If you look at what Chuck Clark did as a half field safety in 2022, regardless of whether you like Chuck Clark or, or, or what, he did not give up the big place as a deep half safety. Can Kyle Hamilton do that? Absolutely. I think, however, the benefit to having him at the second level is he's more explosive, more of a playmaker, and a, a better tackler, maybe. Than, than a Geno Stone. So in terms of those guys being on the field together, it's not that Geno Stone is better or Chuck Clark was better last year than, than Kyle Hamilton as a third-level defender. It goes the other way. It's that Kyle Hamilton as a second-level defender was so far superior to them. It makes sense, right? So did he play in a deep alignment? Yes. Is there a lot of film that I showed you here today to illustrate that in the NFL that he's able to do it consistently? No, there's not. Um, I think he can avoid giving up the big play. And the reality is he's just got a better burst and reaction when he's decisive than Clark and Stone um, from every level. I think when you combine Hamilton, Stone, Williams, they can be somewhat interchangeable. Um, as a nickel safety, and you throw Pepe Williams into the mix, the Ravens have plenty of guys to play that left side safety. Marcus Williams locked in as that right side safety there next to Marlon Humphrey. And then Pepe Williams to move around and be utilized, you know, um, somewhat interchangeably depending on down and distance and if they're in nickel or dime. Ravens are going to draft an outside corner. I think that's obvious in this draft coming up. And Hamilton, if you ask me, will just be better in 2023 than he was in 2022 at everything. He'll still only be 22 years old. I expect to see more plays of him coming forward downhill, defeating blocks, making tackles, forcing fumbles. I also expect to see him with some PBUs and interceptions. He did have five pass breakups. I thought his tackling and overall speed of the game, his overall speed of the game stuck out as a real source of strength for him. His tackling, there was times where it was inconsistent. I felt like um, you, I showed you enough examples here that you can see that's not be, me being overly critical. That's just me being realistic. Probably that's the reason why he fell to pick number 14 in terms of the tackling in the open field and the ability to change directions on some of those shorter routes, which we saw, we saw show up on film in 2022. Let me know what you think of the film I showed, what you think of the, the plays that I chose to use. Uh, and I did put, I think, four plays in here that didn't paint Hamilton in, a, in the greatest light, but I did that to maintain balance. I think his play, decision-making, tackling, and coverage all got better as the year went on. Only played 550 snaps. Petre, um, Kirby Joseph, Jaquan Brisker, all those guys played way more snaps than him. Played a lot more at the third level. I think it's a those four guys are a fantastic group of sa safeties to come out as rookies. I think Dax Hill's got a lot of a potential. Lewis, um, I hope I'm saying his name right, Cine, who had some injury troubles last year, didn't play. Kyle Hamilton just fits right in with that top three group, if you ask me. Incredibly young player. Got better with each week. Um, I want to know what you guys think. If you think Hamilton appears to be a guy who, in, in an N NBA comparison, averages 14 per game as a rookie on like 57% shooting. So clearly you can get more out of him with more touches and more opportunities. He's going to get way more than 550 snaps this year. 
He's going to be way more multiple. I expect to see him lined up near the line of scrimmage more. I expect to see him used as a blitzer. I hope you guys enjoy this breakdown. would like to do one of these for every Ravens rookie. This is going to be my last look at Kyle Hamilton's rookie film. I certainly did three videos on him during the regular season, so I'm kind of dipping my hand back in um, you know, some food that I've already made and ser tried to serve to you. Appreciate you guys giving me some feedback on the video in the comment section. And if you enjoy this video, you think other Ravens fans might enjoy it, please consider sharing a link to it on social media to help my video get more reach. Appreciate you guys' time.